Welcome to my uh, video to hopefully show a few more minor details on how to hopefully cure the wobbly body caused uh, on the um, what was it Hatton's exclusive uh, class 66 which is obviously their own own one which is a superb locomotive Apart from, they really shouldn't have put rotating axle boxes, which is causing nothing but hassle for a lot of people. But uh, the other day, I happened across, I think his name's Tony Dixon on YouTube, and he showed a few things on how to do it, which I'd already done myself anyway, after reading the same basic ideas or problems in Hornby magazine, where they showed you step by step how to do it. So I've done it, and it still didn't work. It still wob wobbled. And a lot of it is to do with gluing the axle boxes back in but also uh, the other week I was on one of Sam's trains videos there was this rather nice well, Chinese an unbranded thing rolling road which is very low and it's got lots of um, potential for lots of axles you can get it in six and eight axles and probably buy extra ones as well that's these things individually just clip in I think but I bought mine with eight to start with because uh, most diesels have um four ax um, six axles this sort of thing certainly does four or six or the odd one with eight like a class 45 46 type things but this particular one is so big that it's actually 20 inches long and if you put this which is this class 66 is a by British standards anyway is a very long loco this thing dwarfs it it's almost I'll go to the end there all right where's my hand I'll keep moving it up over up here I can't get the camera that wide at this distance there it is right there just about see it it's not quite a double the length of a class 66 so if you had something like those American uh, big boys I'm sure it just fits straight on now my only other rolling road at the time until the other day is the good old Hornby one, which is a solid piece of kit by anyone's standards. This thing's built like a brick, you know, outhouse. But it's designed for steam trains, where the tender goes on here, and the um, loco goes normally with a three driving wheels, i.e. a Mallard or an A4, or so I say a Pacific. And I recently bought an extra one for, because I also have a uh, P2, which is a 282, is it? Yeah, I think like that. But they're no good for diesels with all, all powered wheels because the on on the um where the tender sits which obviously is not a powered device on a steam train and the powered wheels i just roll it off off of here so i've decided to buy this thing now you can only buy it on aliexpress not ebay no one on ebay or seems to have this thing for sale it's only available if it seems to be from china so and it's very reasonable it's about 34 35 pound takes about a week and a half two weeks to arrive but i thought this would be very very useful right this it doesn't come with any instructions there's just some hollow tubes at the end you see those the big the main spars or whatever you want to call them rails and they're also electrically conductive i think it might even be stainless steel but the electricity seems to go through it all right the stainless steel isn't a recommend recognized threat uh, metal for use with electricity but all metals conduct to some degree it comes with two two leads they both plug into a quick disconnect block connector so you just press down and the wires come out press down the other side and the wires come out so that's useful in its own right but I don't use it for what I need there you go so at the other end these two wires leads so i say one is a jack connector jack plug i don't know what to do with that but i'm not going to throw it away and the other end 
it's two separate single jacks that's obviously a, a twin or whatever you call it Co coaxial yeah it's one and two one two connectors there and that one's uh, I mean, positive and negative now these are what you need so, let's see if you can see me do this without knocking all my equipment over all lights and wires all over the place around here so I think we'll see, see if we're doing it all right so one just plugs in there the other plugs in there simple as that doesn't matter which way around it is you just set the backwards and forwards on the controller the other way, the other way around if it goes the wrong way doesn't matter so now i don't know if i can turn the phone around or not there We'll see. I'm using, oh, sorry, I shouldn't have happened. A Hornby con, an old cheap Hornby controller, which uses one of these quick plug-in things designed for their track, their quick connect track. But the wiring of this just about fits in those holes. If you can see, I don't know if you can see. So uh, just for a temporary use, which most of these rolling roads are anyway, you don't, you can have them permanently fi fixed up on a bit of wood, I suppose. So that should go in there. Go on. That's in. There we go. And put them to one side so that the wires don't fall out, and that's adequate. All right. So now we take the um. Class 66, let's hope it's all set up right. Just move the camera around a little bit. And these things, these just easily slide around. You, get, you only need, uh, you only need six for a class 66, don't we? Lots of sixes involved here. All right, put the wheels in them, just slide them up, align them with the um, axle boxes, which are the little round bits. You can see, well, obviously the wheel. Now this is a sound loco. Get the wheels in. That's it. Just give them a little. Uh, when they're in there, they don't slide. They are locked by the weight of the very heavy loco. Get it over there. I have to move the whole thing like that. That's one thing. Look, you can actually move well, almost. Ah. Except there's a. A weight bar there that stops this thing because it's just two three tubes and it it would bow in the middle under the weight of this thing so you can actually move it back and forward almost it's quite easy to use all right so this is a sound loco so there's a start up procedure i want to show you how you t see the um which of the axle boxes are actually causing a problem and i've come up with a little idea i found by accident the other day while using this it's a lot easier trying to find out which of the, which actual boxes are causing a problem than running it around a test track or any track and have it sitting right in front of you with lots of illumination and watch and observe so this will take a few seconds to start up there we go apparently this is a start up procedure from class 66 with sound it's not the, and it's on dc i'm on dc oh god Bash the table. I'll bring this around and I'll see it now. Watch the actual boxes, especially that one. Now, there's a very, very little bit of body shake on mine because I've got rid of most of the problems. But in gluing the actual boxes back, I realise this one's really good, nice and concentric. That one is not. I don't know if you can see it or not, actually. 
and you can see it wobbling about. And one way to find out which are the really uh, bad ones or not is to put your fingernail on top of them. Now, that one is pretty concentric. That one looks wobbly, but isn't so bad. But this one, I'm going to put my fingernail on it and watch my finger, because it, it transfers the movement into your finger, and then it exaggerates it a lot. Now you can see it, look at it, bouncing around. Well, that one hardly moves, so that's a good, uh, that's a good one. Leave that alone. This one, I need to break off again and re-glue for about the third time. Patterns, because these things stick, stick or press down on the stub ends of the metal act wheel axles. And patterns have only made it about a millimetre long. And the hole in, in, the, um, in these axle boxes is about three millimetres long, or an eighth of an inch. And they're nowhere near long enough to get guaranteed alignment. This one looks bad, but it isn't. Look at my finger. Hardly moving. So this finger technique is one of the reasons I've decided to do this video. Is that that really shows it up? Look at that. And there's, and there's some at the other end of the loco as well, but the, the camera won't pan around there. This is a rather long loco. So what I intend to do is break these three off and redo them in the video, pretending I'm redoing what I've already done anyway, just to show you what to do. So I'll move this light out again. Stop the video, I mean stop the... Now another thing is, before I turn it off, while it is bouncing around. Right, the slower it goes, the more that bogey jumps up and down. And when I speed it up, I think it's called dynamic balancing. Is it, the faster it gets, the smoother it gets. Well, I base that on... Um, when it's going so fast, the bogey doesn't have time to move up and down, or your eyes can't see it, won't it? We've we'll got the maximum speed here. And the bogey is jumping about, but it's so fast you can't, your, your eyes can't really see it. it comes up, so it becomes quite smooth, but you wouldn't race this thing around the track at that speed, would you? It's mainly being a good slow play, heavy freight. slower it goes, the more that's very obvious, out of bound. Concentricity of that is. Mm. That's where the DC bit of power doesn't do it any good at so low voltages. Alright, let's turn that off now. So. I need to, um, I'll take the loco off of there and start disassembling it. So another useful little device I've got here. Put that out of the way over there. Back over there is a cradle. Well, we've all got one. Well, we haven't all got one, but this is different from your average cradle. So I zoom out again. We're too close now. This is an adaptation. It's your normal blue foam cradle. That shape. Like an extrusion, I suppose, I suppose it is. But when you put a loco in, in, in these heavy loco, but often sold just like this, and you want to work sideways, these things can fall over very easily and damage a very expensive loco. Especially these things with so many little bits of, attached to them. So this company here is a bloke, there's a company called Torrey Laser Limited. They're in North Wales. And they're, a, they're related to the toy shop called Hippo Toys. So, and if you can see it, and zoom in, it's, it's a, what do you call it, a, a laser wooden cut wooden shape, and you glue the two ends together. So you can see that. I'm going to have to take note of that. I might, I might put it in the description. It just clips in there, and now it's rock solid. It just there's no way that's falling over. It wants to stay upright. So I'm not going to put the 
loco in this sideways like this, which it will allow it to do. And before, it would have fallen out, but this thing's quite... See, look, put it over, it goes up that way, not falls towards you. Well, I've now mounted it in the cradle. So, I need to now take these bearings out. And I use this type, I find these perfect for this. I think they're Rolson. Yeah, 7As. There are similar ones available from other makes. But they're nice, they're very fine, they're quite accurate, and they're not expensive. So these are perfect for getting underneath these axles, like that, underneath the head, the rotating head. See it? Like that. And you just give it a wiggle, put, or put your finger over the top. It may suddenly ping off and go across the room. Let's we can do this. Hmm, this one's well glued on, maybe I'll re-glued it and it's... Ah, there we go, give it a little twist, put your finger over it, make sure you get hold of them, put them in a safe place. And that's one. This is this is the one that was really causing the trouble, but you've got to get them all off to get that plate off, that bogey side plate. There we go, there it is. It's like pulling teeth. You might find you have to do this many times actually to get this right because of their bad design of locating on these tiny little spigots. I don't know if you can see the little spigots underneath. Yeah, there they are. Let's use this as a pointer. Uh, there they are. That's only a. That actual active length is only about a millimetre, millimetre and a quarter, something like that. Sixteenth of an inch. No, that's less than that, isn't it? That's, a, that's annoying. Anyway, now they're all off, you can pull this side plate out, and this is what is, is the main cause of the misalignment in the first place. It just pulls out, put your tweezers through the bearing hole, axle bearing, they call it, and it just comes out, like that. Now, let's put the loco out of the way a minute. I don't know if you can see this. Oh yeah. Well, the main problem, and I've already cured it, so I'm going to point out what it, what the problem was. The original problem. I need a pointer for this. Uh, get the light around it like that. Then you can highlight it. This edge here straight edge should be straight from that end all the way to that end but on some of the i think there's there's, there's a left hand and a right hand um what do you call these bogey side plates what you've got to call them axle box plates and as you can see they're not symmetrical which end's got a suspension spring there but it hasn't got one there so they are polarized one side the other and one of the mouldings, I don't know whether you call this left or right, kind of hard to tell on a diesel. I think it is, yeah, it is this one, because I can see I've altered it. So when it's upside down with the spring, looking, it's looking from the ins, where the, with the wheel side, this is the wheel side, that's the side you see from the outside the loco. So on the wheels inside, if, it, if the spring's on the right hand side, that's the dodgy moulding. Apparently the other side is fine. Now, the problem was, these springs, on this side, we're going to see this side, are fine. The springs end flush with that straight edge. And that straight edge is what pushes up into the, the main bogey moulding and located by just these little three pins. One, two, three. That's all that holds them in. It's just pure gravity and friction. There's nothing else. There's no glue or anything. So the more you take these things in and out, they're going to get loose. <laughs> Which may actually help if they can move about a bit. But on this side, which is the outside, the, the bogey springs molding is 
stopped there. So it, when you push this up into the, the, the bogey proper, it basically acts as a stop. Well, I think that acts as a stop as well. So that the, the spring does not put, put, uh, infringe, is that a good word? Into this locating strip, if you like. Whereas on this side, the inside, this end, these two were correct, but these four, oh, that's three, sorry, that one, that one, that one, had one more turn of spring that over, came up here and added like half to three quarters of a millimetre of interference. So when you pushed it into the bogey, bogey overall bogey moulding, this edge here did not fully locate flush. So it it made the alignment to the axle holes here off centre or not concentric. And it's that in non concentricity that causes the, the whole loco to shake as it tries to centre itself but can't. So it's pulling on this bogey frame all the time like this and pulling the local back and forwards. Or was it back and forwards? No. Side to side, up and down, side to side, rock and roll, what you want. So what you have to do with the aid of a Preferably, is what I use, rummaging with toolbox. I mean, I know it's not actually there now. I've done it. But where, can, where are we? You using one of these, chi these chisel blades are excellent. Much easier to use than a normal than one of these for these, where you just want to slice down. You want to cut in that direction? Don't use one of these. Use one of these. Where is it? Yeah. So you can just push like that you just give it a little like that as you go down and you cut until that edge of that blade is level with that stop and from this direction you just press down well it was a bit, it would be on the on the on the de uh, bench when you're doing it press down and it cuts it nice and clean and sharp and square without without much risk of, uh, of slipping which you might do with with a normal uh, knife, modelling knife or scalpel. Anyway, I've done all those, and then <clears throat> just to make sure it's fully flush, using one. Oh, this is an unusual uh, needle file. Well, it's technically not a needle file, because it's not needle shaped, but I call them needle files. This is one I got as an apprentice, but it's perfect because you can come at an angle like this, see, like that, and just locally. Make sure it's nice and smooth and flush with with this surface, that surface. But also, this is something extra that no one seems to point out to anybody, is as this is a plastic moulding, the um, the mould split line for this whole moulding, this side and this side, is smack down the middle of here. And there's a little tiny ridge. I can't you can't see it because I've already done it. But again, probably using a normal flat needle file thing. Just and and there's also just there it was and somewhere else on there was the injection pip where the when the plastic was injected into it and that was just snipped off. So that had a little raised lump. So quickly you just go along the edge, get it so it just disappears. But there you know, right literally right to it all the way along, all the way along, including that little bit just there, just past that pip. And then it's you know it's then nice and flat, and you know that you gain another tiny percentage of a millimeter. And when you push them back up, this for the first time, it actually went all the way up, nice and flush, and that edge disappeared, flush to this edge. Where are we? Here's a loco. Can we see it there? You can see it there nicely there. This edge here. See that one there? Maybe you can see it there. If you can see any part of this this mould, I'll, I'll put it back because I've actually done this, haven't I? So I get all the bits out of the way. Let's put it on. As I've done the work, I can now snip it, put it back. <clears throat> just for a minute, just to, so you can see. Right. So. The springs, these springs here, I know that you can't see, can you? Black on black, it's a trouble with black moulding. Oh, on the yellow there. Where are we? That spring, where are we? There. There. It does locate 
Now we can turn this thing upside down. And you can see, where's my pointy thing? In that hole there. Yep, yeah, there's a slot running along here. I don't know if you can see it very well. Runs all the way along there, and that's where these things locate. And that spring goes in that hole there. So make sure you've got it the right way around. Push it in there. Let's turn it back around this way so I can see what I'm doing. Hopefully it will click into place. Go on, here we go. That went in there nicely. There, now, what can we see? Can we see anything in the light? Oh, there we go. Ah, nice. Where's my pointy stick again? Hang on. Very cramped space around here with all these cameras and things. Now, I'm sure we've got the right bit. There's a get it in the light like that. That's good. As you can see, that's the springs there are hard up against the, the main bogey moulding. Nothing there. See, nice and flush, hard up against it all the way along. Can you see it there, there, and there? This lighting's important. You can't see black on black. It's really hard to see, show you things with this black plastic. That's why a weathered parts always look so good. Because all the detail that you can't see with black suddenly shows up. But you don't, you obviously got to do this job before you do any weathering. Now, you can also see that that... Where are we? Oh, I can't see what I'm doing. The axle of the wheel... Get the light right? It's now nicely in the middle of that hole. Which is where it's supposed to be. Which wasn't the case with all those moulded pips and things and over other turn of a spring in the way. Now you can see that one. And where are we? That one. And nicely in the middle. Or middle with enough float. There is float. There's float in the wheels. Not a lot, but there's a little enough to um for it to centre as it actually works. So the next thing to do, better to actually take that bogey, that, that, that side plate moulding out again, is to got you got to remove the glue from the wick weather. Come on, here you come. Yeah, get that out of the way. Now again, now this is where if, if this was a now this is now a DCC locomotive, which makes it impossible to do the old to do that. Where well, it'd be great to um to get the the glue the glue remnants of super glue off off around here. That's got to come off. You could just do that, but I can't. So that happens. Just a start up procedure for twenty seconds. So it doesn't work for me, I'm afraid. In DCC loco, not not with a DC uh, controller anyway. So you just got to get the glue, get it off, look for it. Super glue doesn't really like glue into super glue. It wants a new clean So you gotta work your way around that. Like they come off reasonably clean. Of course you've got to then get the glue off of the ends of the axle boxes themselves and clean them all up. And they won't look new again on the ends, but you can't see that end because it's in here, hidden by the wheel axle. But they must be clean and, and flush. No no glue remnants, at least not enough. No lumpy bits, that's for sure. And you'll never get the thing to run concentric. It's nice and actually aligned down there. You can see bits pop off. This super glue does come off. It's not as brilliant as I originally made it out to be. It will crack and snap off. Right. <clears throat> a useful tool is a lady's powder brush, a new one. Never will get used a second hand one. From your missus. Uh, make her hand uh, putting powder weathering on it if you do. Get that off. Maybe a bit more. Yeah, something over there, is it not? Oh, I haven't got my close up specs on, I just realised that's what I can't see properly. Put them on. Mm -hmm. Right, make sure the glue's all gone. 
yeah it, it takes some of the paint off you but you can't see it when it's behind those frames so i won't worry about it too much that's what the blade does right and these um things will what do you call them the axle boxes here which you must use the tweezers i haven't done this one but they they fit on the end of those things you see bit, if you can't see can you mm. there you go it goes on there but i can't push it on because i haven't drilled it out yet anyway push that to one side so again using your needle file your flat needle file get the glue off and you can see and then make the the end nice and flat don't go like this just a nice simple one direction move and back one direction move and back gently to make sure it's nice and square a bit below now to guarantee it fits back and there's no glue jamming it up this is a you can, you can, I bet lots of people have got these things this is this is from the 1980s but they're still basically the same I'm assuming blue boxes these days but many sizes of drill this I think I've got the point eight seems to be about the right size well that hole in there Oh, can you see? Yeah, that hole in there is about three millimeters deep. So you just rotate it in a pin chuck. This is an actual Eclipse one. This is not a Chinese copy. This is a real deal. This this pin chuck. Oh, it's one of these. I don't see many of them made anymore. I'm sure. Mule Tools Limited. You know, like Sheffield. That's a real deal. This thing. <clears throat> so you can see the that goes in, then you can see all the bits come off. See how far is that going in? Get it in there, put my thumbnail there, pull it off. There you go. That's about that's about three, three and a half, eighth of an inch. So there's one. I've got to do three of these. I'll do them anyway. I'll decide whether to edit this out later. Let's not put too much glue on doing this. Going alright now, that one's not. That one's definitely got glue on it. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, it's quite easy to focus close up on these things. Let's look at it sideways, make sure you are. Turn it round, look at it, make sure it, it looks square and all. If you rotate round, it's not angled in one direction. If I had three millimetres of it, if that was three metres long, it wouldn't matter if there was a slight angle on it because it would locate on the spigot, i.e. the end of the shaft. As it's so short, it wobbles around on the end of it. So if it was like... See, a very short one like that see how it can do that edge of the screen but again it the deeper you go the more it will do you know, that when you get deep it's stable but if you're when you're shallow with like one millimeter of interface like that it can do that and that's the problem when you glue these things back on and it ends up like that when you want it Against the blue there, against my finger. But you know, if I rotate that, it's concentric or actually aligned is another way of calling it. The hat has made a boob there. I should have made the axle much longer. Anyway, it doesn't help the existing owners, does it? Even if they say, "Oh, we'll put it right in the future," it doesn't help those who've already got the things, does it? So anyway, then that one done. One more. As I'm an engineer, I'm hopefully I'm explaining why certain things have to be the way they are. Some people show you how to do things, but they don't say why they're doing them. Hopefully I'm showing you why, or telling you why. Um, I was going to say that there was a lot of bother if they had made those axles three, about three millimetres long. Extensions out of here. These, so they stuck up basically twice that length. It's up here somewhere. They've been perfectly alright. 
Couldn't have had any of these troubles. <sighs> oh, drill it. Drill it down again. Drill any glue out. <sighs> Make sure it's in there properly. Always put your fingernail there. Pull it out and see. Yeah, that's about right, isn't it? Yeah, see. Mm. I'm doing a lot of this stuff right in the corner of the picture, aren't I? It's because the loco's in the way. Got so much stuff on this table, I've hardly got room to move anymore. But once I've done the changes, I can't film it again, so I'm filming it the best I can while I'm doing it. Now, <laughs> had the idea. So there we go. That's now done. Yeah, that's fine. Put that over there out of the way. Put the files out there out of the way. Put that in there and right. So make sure there's no get rid of all the loose bits. Put this back. Where are we? There we go. I think we can see. All right. Put that back in there carefully. There we go. It's gone right up there. I think. Check it in the light again. Yeah, there we go. Now, because I actually need this now to match for the to be in the cradle sideways like that. I don't want it sideways like this because I want to push those bearings in and I want gravity not to buy them one way so they lean i want them to be as square as possible when i, I glue them so what we're using now uh, this is your d deluxe materials rocket max thick non-runny cyano glue cyano that's, cyano is for short for cyanide if you didn't know but it's not poisonous because i use it to hit glue people's bodies back together again that's what it was invented for yeah right now, I'll use this uh, dentistry tool, it's actually a scraping tool, I suppose. And I'll put, uh, I'll use whatever you want, some thin in in implement. Where are we? Here we go. Put the tiniest little blob on the end, like that. So you've got some control, because the, the blob on the end of the glue is obviously much bigger than that. See? So you don't want that much glue going on the end of the bearing. Not the bearing, I'll call it a bearing. These rotating axle boxes, I suppose they were, are actually bearings in reality, or were. Right, so we got the thingy here, we got a little bit of glue on the end of there, and just just touch the end. We don't don't want it going up the sides at all, that would be disastrous, because it might glue it to that hole there. You don't want that happening, it's got to be free to move in there. Oh, and by the way, I didn't open those holes up, you shouldn't need to. You can a gnat if you want, but you don't have to. That bit of design was right. It was all about the alignment of all these bits, not the size of the hole. So I've been told. Right, can you see what I'm doing? Well, I'm just putting it in the hole. Nice and controlled so that glue does not touch that hole. Get it through there quick. There we go. Through. Now, I'm going to fiddle about now to make sure underneath. It does. Can you? I don't know if you can see. It. Oh yes, you can. You can see that quite nice, actually. Right, get it on that axle end, like stub. There it goes. Can you see? Is this thing focusing or not? I don't know what it's looking at now. There you go. Also, put your fingers there. It focuses on your fingers, doesn't it? Let's bring this down a bit. There, in the middle of the screen, a bit better. There you go. Right, and push it on. Hold the wheel with the bottom of your finger now and push. Push it this end down, make sure it gets on there. It pushed quite hard actually. Because you you're actually pushing against an air pocket in the hole with the glue lick liquid in there. And hold it for a second. Alright, now yeah, that's in. That one. Turn it back this way. Just to prove it is in there. Mm. And should the wheel should this lift up and down easy so the can you see it? Yeah. Not 
should be free to move there up and down there you go like that if it doesn't then the glue's got on it and you don't want that to happen you've got to keep it moving to, or pull it out quick before the glue sets stop it sticking in the hole it could cause you loads of problems yeah it must be quite a, a nightmare for the, the the people who manufacture this to assemble all this it's taken quite a long time just to do it like this or maybe it was the speed they were doing it that had the issues this needs care and attention oh got another bit of glue on the end of that one tiny little amount hmm. plunk it in this hole now Good this um fuel tank being there, it gives you something to grab hold of without snapping something off. Alright, now again we got a push up on here. The thumbnails like push down on there. Maybe it goes on. Go on, get on there. Turn it back around again. There. Hopefully that is consistent. This is where it'd be nice to actually well, maybe actually put it on on the track pretty quick before the glue really goes off, so it might self center itself better. All right, another bit of glue on the last one. Okay. Right, where are we? Transfer it onto there. Like that, just shining in the light, see it. Right. Where are we? There we go. Put it in the hole. better than others for some reason there okay now hopefully that's yeah that's free to move that's still free to move that's free to move so what I'm going to do I'm not going to waste any time waiting for the glue to dry. Put that out of the way. Let's put it back on here. And maybe a new idea I just had. Getting the wheels to move round while on the rolling road. If there is any slight misalignment while it's still slightly drying, I don't know what you can see. Right, we're back on the rolling road, camera adjusted, let's see what happens. I have to wait for this bit, nothing I can do about this. Place. Ooh, uh, 
It's not too good, is it? So it's this start-up procedure is a bit, a bit annoying. Can't get on with the job. Right, here we go again. No, that is all over the place. What is the matter with that? Or oh, is the boat it's definitely on the rolling road, isn't it? I don't know what you're seeing. Come on. Again, dearie me. I have to come back to that one. Let's do a pause. Anyway, that's about the fourth attempt. I think I've cracked it. It's not perfectly concentric, but the loco doesn't rock and roll. If it does, it's very, very minimal. I get it started again, and you can see. Right, it is a repeatable, you can just keep breaking them off and carefully scraping the glue off, it might just dry and keep retrying this till you get it right. So you've got to have the patience of Job, is it, I think? Those are expensive and I don't want to send it back and, and what you're, gonna, you're not going to get a repeat bit replacement. It's only going to have the same issues again because you um, can't see happens. Mending's so many, what they could have done I suppose is send out some new side plate mouldings, that might have been a better idea, without the faulty spring overlap. No. Uh, you can see it moving, but then probably it's not a bad idea to see it moving, otherwise what's the point in having if they're so concentric you can't see them move? And they would have noticed and go, ooh, look at that, isn't that different? Well, just out of interest, I'm pretty sure I also own the uh, Helgen 18,000 gas turbine loco, and I pretty remember that's got rotating axles, and that doesn't have any issues. It has its own issues, we're not going around corners, but I don't think it's got axle box issues. Right, let's zoom out. Yeah, that looks pretty still, that body, doesn't it? I think I've still got the other end to have a go at, but this end's okay now. I'll put her up to high speed to go a look. Yeah, steady as a rock, and then I'll slow her right down as slow as she can go. Which is interesting the noises those engine makes. I'm slowing it down slowly. Right, it doesn't seem to be making a lot of difference. Right, let's slow motion. Oh, no, it stopped. I wish it wouldn't keep stopping. Keep going. I want to see, I want to see, I want to see those bogies. Oh, the bogies are pretty. Now yeah, we got slow rotation now. And that bogey isn't moving. Get this lamp a bit closer, it won't make any difference. See it? It's not it's not shaking at all. That's pretty good. But you think it's uh, the um, axle boxes are not concentric for this like that one. I think that's more to do with maybe a scrape of paint missing or something like that. So you can see it. Well, that, that's done it, that's got it right. We've got to do one at the other end as well. I don't really see that. Yeah, that one, the, f the, f the furthest one, the one nearest the cab, is causing an issue. It can't focus up there, I'm afraid. But you can see it going round. We've got to do, do that one next. But at least this is a repeatable exercise if they don't. Well, you can still keep snapping them off and pulling them off and scraping them. You don't seem to lose any material. So, I 
class that as a done deal, as far as this video is concerned anyway. I'd say it's my best video because I can't get the camera in the right place. It's too small and it's too black. It all disappears into the gloom. Anyway, thanks for watching.